Hello and welcome to Worship with Orange Uniting Church. Have you ever played in a sports team? What does that team try and do and how do they do that? We might not always call them teams, but what other kinds of teams are there? And what do these teams do that makes them a team? And can we be a team on our own? Do the people in the team all do the same job? Is that what makes them a team? Obviously, people in a team often have different things to do, and it's by everyone doing their bit that they achieve their aim. Whether that's to win a match, play or sing music, and so on. So perhaps the most important thing about a team is that it has people in it who work together. I wonder if Jesus had a team. Well, maybe we'll find out later. Come Holy Spirit, fill us with your peace. Come Holy Spirit, unite us in our worship. Come Holy Spirit, raise us by your power. Come Holy Spirit, come now. And our acknowledgement of country uh, for Pentecost Sunday. The Ancient of Days breathed life into this land and her peoples. From time beyond our reckoning, the Wiradjuri people have blessed this place through their care and concern. We pay our respects to their elders and leaders, past and present, and pray for the future of their communities. May we walk gently and respectfully on this land. We also remind ourselves that Orange Uniting Church is a safe place for all people to worship, regardless of race, creed, age, or cultural background. Now let's talk to God and listen for God as we pray. Pour out your spirit, loving Lord, that your sons and your daughters may hear your prophetic word. Pour out your spirit, loving Lord, that your sons and your daughters may know how to live according to your ways. Pour out your spirit, loving Lord, that your sons and your daughters may worship you. In spirit and in truth, God, your love is unconditional. Your gifts are offered with measureless generosity. Your peace is all-encompassing. We are sorry for the times when we have put conditions on our willingness to care, when we have kept what we have for ourselves and refused to share with others, when we have failed to seek peace and have caused discord. Forgive us, restore us, renew us by your spirit of life. Amen. And now our reading read to us by Margaret. This reading comes from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Alamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, 
In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them then. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will know I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Margaret. Well, fire fascinates us sometimes, doesn't it? Or brings out different emotions. I wonder why that is. Australia, of course, even has a museum of fire. The thing about fire is, though, we often love it. But yet, we're also wary of it. We teach our children to be careful around it. We've watched in horror and awe as Australia and other countries have burned in this last year. Fire is warming. Fire is cleansing. Fire is consuming. Fire is dangerous when ignored or treated lightly. Fire is life-giving as we consider the sun and its heat that provides life. Our reading today is the image of flames associated with the coming of the Holy Spirit. What does that say about what the Holy Spirit does and can do with the people of God? It may well warm and comfort us. It may well cleanse us and show us the changes needed in our life. It must not be ignored. It gives us life. And it unites us with a common purpose. Today is Pentecost. And to some, it is the birthday of the church. It is the day we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, overflowing and pouring out over the gathered disciples who were then poured out from their hiding place into the community around them, sharing God's story with confidence, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The miraculous power of the Holy Spirit brings the people together from their different tribes and nations all are able to hear and understand the word of God. Here the good news of Jesus becomes the invitation. Let anyone, here everyone can hear, understand and respond to this open invitation. There are echoes in the passage from Acts in the gospel reading. In the latter, Jesus invites people to come to him. He will pour out water to anyone who thirsts for him promising them the Holy Spirit. In Acts, the promise is delivered. Today, we too hear the story in a language we can understand. The promised pouring out of the Holy Spirit is for us too, when we respond to the same invitation. Like Peter and his companions, this must lead to us pouring out of our hiding places and sharing the good news with those around us. Let's offer ourselves and all that we have and value to God in this prayer of offering. God, we offer you our all. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our homes with peace. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with love. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your power, that we may live and love for you. Amen. And our prayers of the people. 
Holy Spirit of peace. We pray for homes and nations where there is discord and conflict. Pour out your breath of peace that people may listen to each other and respect one another, may honor each other. Holy Spirit, hear us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit of hope, we pray for those who live in despair, for those who can see no purpose in their lives, for those who cannot see a way ahead, for those who feel completely alone. Holy Spirit, hear us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And Holy Spirit of unity, we pray for your church, for its ministry to the faithful, for its mission to the world. May the spirit of Pentecost breathe upon us, that we may witness to the world the comfort, meaning, and love that you offer. Heal our differences and make us one in you. Holy Spirit, hear us. Holy Spirit, come. In the name of our Savior, we pray. Amen. Well, hopefully you can join us on Zoom at 10.30. See you then. But as we finish, I offer a prayer of blessing. May the power of the Spirit challenge you. May the peace of the Spirit comfort you. May the presence of the Spirit enable you to live in love and service in the name of Christ. Amen.